In today's video, I'm going to tell you if it makes sense to ban electronic cigarettes in the world. Are they really a safer alternative than regular cigarettes? With the ease of buying a vape at the nearest corner store, wouldn't it be better to legalize it once and for all and control the quality of what's sold out there? Tell me in the comments if you have ever used any type of electronic cigarette or know someone who does. To find out if it makes sense to ban the sale of a product that claims to be safer than traditional white cigarettes, let's understand the real difference between traditional cigarettes and electronic cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes appeared in 2003 as an alternative to regular cigarettes. They are small devices filled with a liquid composed mainly of water, glycerin, and propylene glycol. This liquid can contain flavors, artificial scents, and even nicotine in some cases. The magic of the electronic cigarette happens when the coil inside the device heats the liquid and it transforms into a vapor that is inhaled by the user. This production of vapor from a liquid is the main difference between the electronic cigarette and the traditional cigarette, which produces smoke from the combustion of tobacco. The vapor from the electronic cigarette dissipates much more easily than smoke, and there is no fire or ash. That's why vapes are often tolerated in common areas and even indoors. Many people don't even think they're actually smoking. Another difference is the taste and smell. Most regular cigarettes have a flavor that lingers on the tongue and a very strong smell, even unpleasant for outsiders. Electronic cigarettes, on the other hand, have artificial flavors that range from mint and tropical fruits to delicious desserts. The options only increase every day, transforming the act of smoking into a personalized and attractive experience for people. This alone is enough to make these devices very popular, especially among young people. Another major attraction concerns the cigarette's effect on health. In conventional cigarettes, burning tobacco produces a lot of toxic substances that cause serious health problems, such as cardiovascular diseases and cancer. That's why regular cigarettes are so harmful. Electronic cigarettes do not involve combustion, so in theory, they are just an apparently harmless liquid. Because of all this attractiveness, estimates show that the number of people smoking electronic cigarettes in the world went from 21.3 million in 2012 to 81 million in 2022, an increase of 380%, and the use is becoming especially common among teenagers and young people. In the United States in 2018, more than one in four high school students admitted to using electronic cigarettes in the 30 days prior to the survey. And in the world, it's not different. 22% of 16 and 17 year old students had already tried electronic cigarettes. These numbers show what we all already see on the streets. Just stand by the gate of any school at dismissal time and see if the boys aren't carrying a USB drive in their pocket just waiting for the bell to ring to flash the light and puff a scented cloud into the air. Tell me how this situation is in your city. But is the electronic cigarette really so safe that it can even be used by teenagers? What has science discovered so far about the real effects of electronic cigarettes on health? Burning tobacco in conventional cigarettes produces smoke with more than 7,000 chemical substances, and at least 70 of them are carcinogenic. Electronic cigarettes do not have this tobacco burning and do not produce that smoke with an array of toxic substances. But the truth, folks, is that they have other harmful substances and can cause damage in other ways. Many of the components of the liquid in electronic cigarettes, especially some flavorings and additives, are considered safe and approved by various health agencies worldwide. But this safety pertains to the ingestion of these substances. Science is beginning to discover that when some of them are inhaled or vaporized, they can be very dangerous. One of the concerning additives is diacetyl, added to give a buttery or caramel flavor to the electronic cigarette, but which can cause a severe lung disease that culminates in the loss of lung function. Additionally, harmful chemical substances can be formed when these flavorings are heated together with the glycerol present in almost every electronic cigarette. One of these formed substances is formaldehyde, which is known to be carcinogenic at certain concentrations and can cause respiratory problems, irritation of the eyes, nose, and throat, and affect the immune system. It seems like I'm the one smoking, but no, folks. It's just a cold. Researchers have also identified heavy metal particles, such as chromium, nickel, lead, and cadmium in the liquids, and vapors of electronic cigarettes, probably because they are coming off the device's structure, and these metals were in quantities higher than what is considered safe. The truth is that we still don't know what the long-term consequences of inhaling all these substances combined are. Studies are beginning to show that the use of electronic cigarettes increases the risk of asthma by 30% and the risk of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease by 40%. And as recent as the use of these cigarettes is, they are already causing a new lung disease called Evali e-cigarette, or vaping use associated. Lung injury, it is a severe disease that injures the lung and causes fibrosis, leading to respiratory failure that can result in death. 
A report from the U.S. showed that between December 2019 and February 2020, three months, there were nearly 3,000 cases of hospitalization due to a valley and 68 confirmed deaths. And another major problem that I haven't mentioned, folks, is nicotine. It is responsible for making regular cigarettes so addictive. Electronic cigarettes contain nicotine salt in a different form, which is nicotine salt, a modification of nicotine that creates a less irritating vapor for the throat, but no less addictive. Recent studies are showing that nicotine addiction levels among electronic cigarette users can be twice as high as among regular cigarette smokers. Not all vapes contain nicotine, but there have been cases where researchers found nicotine in products that claimed to be free of it. This is especially concerning for use by young people and teenagers because the brain is still developing. Exposure to nicotine at this stage can have permanent effects on memory, mood, and learning. Not to mention the possibility of developing nicotine addiction and having to face this disorder for a long time. These health risks raise a very important discussion about the regulation of electronic cigarettes in the world. With so many people using them, wouldn't it be better to legalize and control the quality of the electronic cigarettes sold? In this case, there would even be tax collection that could be directed to treating the diseases that electronic cigarettes might cause. I'll tell you what I think about this matter in a moment, but seriously, if you've made it this far, subscribe to the channel to support us and let me know in the comments. Are you in favor of the ban on electronic cigarettes in the world or not? And why? Think about it. It's not an easy answer, right? Have you subscribed to the channel that helps you make decisions based on science and have you thought about it? So let's discuss whether it makes sense to ban or, better yet, maintain the ban on electronic cigarettes in the world. The first thing that needs to be considered when discussing the ban on electronic cigarettes is that the main interested party in their legalization is not the smoker, nor even society with more collected taxes. The main interested party is the tobacco industry, which historically uses various lobbying tactics and misinformation to keep its harmful products on the market. But who sponsored the study? British American Tobacco, owner of Lucky Strike, Dunhill, and several other cigarettes. They claim that the electronic cigarette would solve a problem instead of creating one, which is not quite true. And the costs of treating the diseases caused by the electronic cigarette? How much will the world spend treating cancer and nicotine addiction that were not accounted for? We are the ones paying the price. The tobacco industry argues that the electronic cigarette is a harm reduction measure compared to regular cigarettes. But with the electronic cigarette, we are just beginning to understand the harms, especially long-term ones. The use of vape as an alternative is very uncertain. Some studies show benefits and others do not. But even if the benefit is proven, it's dangerous to legalize the sale for everyone since many will start smoking because of it. What some countries like Australia and the United Kingdom are doing is making electronic cigarettes with nicotine a type of medicine sold only in pharmacies, where purchase is allowed only for those with a medical prescription, indicating that it is a treatment to reduce smoking. Another argument in favor of legalization is that smokers should be free to decide if they want an electronic cigarette. Philip Morris, owner of Marlboro, riding this wave of freedom of choice, launched the campaign, I Want to Choose. But it's almost bizarre, folks, because while on one hand, a person may have the ability to choose to start smoking on the other, once nicotine addiction sets in, my friend, it becomes a disease. The person can't stop unless there is treatment or an extraordinary willpower to withstand withdrawal crises. Anyone who smokes and hasn't been able to quit knows what I'm talking about. Think about it. Do you really believe that a person with addiction, or you yourself in that situation, have complete control over your choices? It's not easy to stop. Besides, they don't provide all the information clearly for the person to make the best decision. Not everyone will read scientific articles and discover that the electronic cigarette can be even more addictive than the regular cigarette, or cause diseases unique to it. And the worst part? A large portion of the affected smokers are teenagers, people who are forming their opinions. The industry's argument is that the product is made for adults, mainly for those who want to quit smoking regular cigarettes. But do you really think these colorful products with lights and that you can smoke SpongeBob are made for adults? The industry knows very well that the younger a teenager buys their product, the longer they will stay connected to the brand. Anyone who follows digital marketing knows that this is LTV lifetime value, how much the consumer will consume throughout their life. Not to mention the colorful advertisements on social media with healthy people using the cigarette in leisure moments. The same strategy used in the past when the cigarette was seen as a symbol of beauty and it couldn't be missing. The argument that the ban stimulates the illegal market and that legalization would guarantee quality control. In theory, it might be, but we have examples showing that it doesn't work in practice. Just look at the example of regular cigarettes. Even with their sale being legal, 49% of cigarettes consumed in 2020 were smuggled. 
In other words, legalizing the sale doesn't guarantee that only registered products will be consumed. But even though it's banned, the tobacco industry has been benefiting greatly from the lack of rigorous enforcement and loopholes in the legislation. Today you find vapes being sold as herb vaporizers or aroma diffusers, masking their true use as electronic cigarettes, just because these products are technically allowed. Have you or anyone you know used electronic cigarettes? What are your thoughts on the ban? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video informative and thought-provoking, please leave a like and share it with your friends. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Your subscription really helps us to continue bringing you quality videos filled with valuable information. Stay healthy. Stay happy.